men are owed a global apology. You see, we were sold this lie as women. Today, we'll explore the reasons why leftover women are facing challenges as men are no longer pursuing them as they used to. If you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing and turning on the notification bell to support the channel. Let's get started. What happened to men pursuing girls? What happened? Why aren't men pursuing women anymore? Honestly, I don't know why women keep asking this question over and over. But let's see if we can try and explain it to them one more time. But let's be honest, though. The answers we're giving them are going to go in one ear and right out the other because the reality is they don't really want to know what men actually think. They just want men to validate what they think is the reason, even though it's completely wrong. So why are men not approaching women anymore? Well, to quote an old guy from a few hundred years ago, let me count the ways. And I'm going to give you the three biggest reasons why men have stopped approaching. Number one, because there's nothing to be gained in doing so. Sorry, ladies, but men have figured out that while you think you can have all the insane expectations in the world, you know, like if he isn't six feet tall with six-pack abs and a six-figure income, you also tell us that if men have even the slightest of expectations, hell any at all, then we're controlling, manipulative, and abusive. The expectation in today's relationships is that they're a one-way street where men give, 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 and get nothing in return. Thanks, but no thanks. Number two, because it's not safe to approach women anymore. The risk to being in the vicinity of a woman or a group of women, let alone approaching one, is simply too great. False allegations are rampant at work, at school, in the home, literally anywhere in today's society. Women have weaponized Me Too and are using it to get back at men for even the slightest of reasons, knowing not only will they be believed, even when it's been proven beyond a doubt that they're lying, but that they'll get a ton of sympathy for the trauma they faced. Approaching a woman nowadays isn't just taking the risk of getting mocked, made fun of, or told to go away, incel. It carries the very real risk of arrest, prison, and having your life destroyed. Ask yourselves, ladies, would you be willing to take that risk, knowing that if you just happen to pick the wrong person to approach, they'll destroy your life just because they can? Yeah, I didn't think so. And finally, number three, the biggest and best reason of all, you told us not to, ladies. You've made it abundantly clear you don't want us, don't need us, and most importantly, don't want us approaching you. So while you may think we men aren't listening, aren't paying attention, we heard you loud and clear, and we men are giving you exactly what you want, which begs the question, why, for the love of God, do you keep asking these same questions over and over? It's truly mind-blowing how these women keep asking the same redundant questions, feeding their own delusions while invalidating themselves in the process. It's like taking a giant step backward. The attitudes towards men over the last 15 years have made it too dangerous and simply not worth it for us to chase or approach women anymore. Let's talk about divorce for a moment. It's turned into a nightmare for men, both emotionally and financially. We've lost good years of our lives and personal property, leaving us with nothing left to lose. It's like women want what they can't have, not what they can actually have. And let's be honest, most women just aren't worth it. There's nothing to gain but huge risks. So why bother? It's better to focus on personal growth and development, steering clear of women altogether. After all, Women are the ones always looking for men to take care of them, right? Well, if they want that, they should take the initiative. Otherwise, they'll end up alone with their cats, wondering where it all went wrong. You see, men have been painted as the villains for far too long. We've been shamed, blamed, and cast aside. But what do we get in return? Nothing but more demands, more expectations, and more toxicity. We're tired of being treated like disposable commodities only valued for what we can provide. But here's the thing, it's not just about what women want from us. It's also about what they bring to the table. And let's face it, most of them bring nothing but drama, entitlement, and unrealistic expectations. 
They expect us to jump through hoops to please them, while they offer nothing in return. It's time for women to wake up and realize that they're not entitled to anything. They're not princesses waiting to be rescued. They're not goddesses deserving of worship. They're just ordinary human beings, flawed and imperfect like the rest of us. So if women want to be treated like equals, they need to start acting like it. They need to take responsibility for their own lives and stop expecting men to do everything for them. Otherwise, they'll continue to be disappointed, wondering why they can't find a good man, while pushing away the ones who actually care. If women want to find happiness and fulfillment in their lives, they need to start looking inward instead of outward. Otherwise, they'll continue to chase after the wrong things, only to end up empty-handed in the end. Hey, little Bumble update. Um, I was supposed to have a date tonight. Um, so we're supposed to meet here at a restaurant at 7.30. Um, it was going to be a first date. The guy, like, pursued me, of course. And we chatted probably, we've chatted probably for, like, four days. And, like, yesterday he was like, hey, can I have your number? Let's talk off of here. And I was like, sure, let's do it. And so we did. And so he texted me, like, being consistent. And he was like, so when am I going to be able to take your, you know, pretty butt on a date? And I was just like, well, um, I'm free, like, any time in the evenings, like, after 6. Like, I work. You know, and on the weekends after six, I work on the weekends too. And so he was like, okay, well, I don't have any plans tonight. What about tonight? Is that too early? Like, And I was like, no, I was like, I don't have any plans either. And he's like, well, would you want to go, you know, grab a drink, go to dinner? What would you want to do something? And I was like, yeah, I would love that. I was like, I'll be free. Like we can meet somewhere. I can meet you at 730 somewhere. Okay. Where do you want to go? You just pick a restaurant and like, I'll meet you there. I, and he did love that um so he you know we text like up until about 6 30 and so at like 6 40 I was like hey I was like it'll be 15 minutes and I'll be you know leaving it takes me about 15 to get there nothing so I was like okay cool um so then I text him at seven when I was leaving I was like hey you know um I'm on my way nothing so then I get to the restaurant and it's about 7.20, and I'm not early for anything. Like, we're supposed to be at 7.30. I'm normally here right at 7.30. But I was early, and so I called him. So I was like, well, maybe he's driving. I don't know how far it takes him. Um, he just, whatever. Call him, and no answer. So I looked. I was like, he hadn't blocked me because my texts are still going through. He hasn't blocked me on the app. So, like, whatever. Um... So, it is now 7.52, and we're supposed to be at 7.30, and I've heard nothing from him. So, um, this sucks. Like, why waste my time? Because I stopped working early, so I could leave, get home, get ready. Like, you pursued me. Like, why? <laughs> why waste my fucking time? Like, that's what pisses me off about dating in this world is, like, be a damn adult and, like, cancel. Like, if you, or don't even pursue me. Like, there's, like, don't waste my time. Um, it's very frustrating um, just to be, like, like, I've wasted my time, wasted makeup, you know, to come here, wasted gas, and then just for you to not show up when all you had to do was, oh, I don't know, not talk to me or just not ask me out. Like, what's the purpose of it? But here we are again, fourth time. Cool. Absolutely. It's amazing how something as seemingly small as chewing gum can be such a turnoff during a date. Men are indeed intelligent beings who reflect on every conversation, analyzing whether there's potential for something more. And let's be real here. If a woman is chomping on her gum like a cow, it's definitely not sending the right vibes. It's clear that this guy wasn't feeling like he was going to get what he wanted from her. Maybe he sensed a lack of chemistry or compatibility. And you know what? That's perfectly okay. Men are starting to realize that they don't need to settle for someone who doesn't meet their standards. In fact, some men are even taking it a step further and standing girls up on first dates to see how they react. It's a bit extreme, sure, but it's a clear sign of how fed up some guys are with the entitlement and game playing that seems to be rampant in the dating scene. And let's not forget about those chads who are spinning women up with false hope, only to ghost them later on. It's a cruel game. And unfortunately, it seems like some women are falling right into the trap. But here's the thing. True connection and chemistry can't be forced. You'll find everything you want in a man when you least expect it. And for many men, 
drama is an absolute deal-breaker. They crave peace and tranquility in their lives, not unnecessary drama and chaos. So it's no wonder that modern Western women are struggling to find the right man. If they continue down this path of drama and entitlement, they may find themselves doomed to a life of loneliness and disappointment. But hey, maybe it's time for a reality check. Maybe it's time to start appreciating the good men who are out there, instead of playing games and chasing after something that may never materialize. I have had multiple men in my adult life ask me the same question. Megan, you seem great. You seem awesome. How come you've never had a boyfriend? How am I supposed to answer that? Because yeah, I am great. I am awesome. But it's like when you go to a job interview and they're like, what experience do you have? And you're like, well, actually, this is going to be my first job, but like, I'm really prepared for it. I've, I went to college. I got all the classes done. Like, I know exactly what this job needs from me. Um, but they're like, but you've never had experience. You've never done this job before. <laughs> and they don't hire you. That's how I currently feel. Because again, multiple men in my adult life who I have talked to have asked me that question and I say the same thing back like I I don't know <laughs> because I do feel like I'm prepared for this I am not hiding anything from you guys there's not some weird skeleton in my closet no human skeletons <laughs> And I know without a shadow of a doubt in my heart that there's going to be some keyboard warrior who looks at me and he says, you know the reason. You know the reason. It's because you're fat. You know the reason. Honey, I know. I have a mirror. Uh, but plenty, plenty of plentiful people find love. So shut it. Anyway. <laughs> And with this whole shoot my shot series that I've been doing on TikTok, by the way, sorry there have been no updates, but really there ha there have been no updates. Sorry, sorry. Um, but a lot of you guys in my comments have been like, Megan, how are you single? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And I know that this path is not a um, is not an abnormal one for a lot of people. I know that there are a lot of people who are my age, older or younger, who have never had a boyfriend or a significant other. Uh, so I know that I'm not alone in this, but at what point, at what point is my not gonna be alone in this life? <laughs> I don't know if I have a point to this video. I'm just upset. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, I am a catch. <laughs> I know it. You know it. I just need one man. I just need one man to know it. Not just to know it, but like to follow through on it. Like, where's the follow through, people? It sounds like she's stuck in the past, reminiscing about her glory days from 20 years ago. But here's the thing. She needs a reality check. Thinking you're a great catch is one thing, but actually being one is another. And from what it sounds like, her problem isn't weight-based. It's that she's too picky and has standards that no one has met yet. Let's not forget, men have standards too. They're not just going to settle for anyone who comes along. And if she's unknowingly making people feel friend-zoned, then she's definitely not sending the right signals. But here's the real kicker. Most women aren't actively working on improving themselves. They're too focused on finding someone who meets their checklist of requirements instead of looking inward and working on becoming the best version of themselves. Men don't like it when women appear to know it all and don't allow them to step into their masculine energy and be the hero. It's emasculating and off-putting. So here's a piece of advice for her. Maybe it's time to start being the dominant one and asking men out. After all, men are too afraid to make the first move these days, thanks to the fear of being accused of harassment or labeled as creepy. It's time for women to take charge of their dating lives and start making things happen. I want to talk about the dating in New York because it fucking sucks. Like every single situationship and like thing that I've been in has gone so left. And I'm like, is it me? Like, what did I do? And I sit here and I reflect and it's like, I give so much, like, I hate it 
that I'm such like a lover girl, even though I don't really like look like it. Like when I love, I love so hard. And like, oh God. And it's like every situation that I've been in, I'm like, and it just goes left. I'm like, what did I, is it me? Like, what did I do? And it's just like, like, I don't know. Like, I'm so over it. Like, I don't want to do the dating apps anymore. Like, I'm done with dating. Like, before I met you, I was at peace. And then I met you. And we hung out. And, like, did the thing. And it was so good. And I was so happy. And I was so comfortable. And, like, everything was great. And then it goes left. And it's like, you deserve, like, disturbed my peace, you know? Like, I'm just, like, so done. Every time I give it another try. And I end up, like really finding a connection with someone something ends up happening and I always think that like I'm the one who fucked it up and I'm like like ugh. like I swear to god the rate that this is going I'm like I'm I'm just I just give up like I, t I totally give up I throw like I'm done I surrender like I'm just going to accept the fact that I want to be alone for the rest of my life because I'm never going to find my person because every time I do and every time I think I found someone, I didn't. And they end up just like... They end up just... Like, just, just like leaving. And I'm like, what happened? And I know this is like so cringe of me because I... First of all, I hate crying, especially in front of people, because I don't want to show my weakness and vulnerability. But at the same time, I'm like, if somebody else has to relate to this, because what the fuck, actually? So now I'm here, trying to enjoy the holiday with my family. My stepdad was nice enough to make me a super fucking stiff drink. So I can't breathe for a second. It just relax but yeah how's your sunday it's a familiar tale chad swoops in once again leaving these modern women in a whirlwind of confusion and heartache chads have become a nightmare for these women luring them onto a carousel of false promises and fleeting affection only to leave them stranded in the vast expanse of the dating pool but let's not mince words here these women are part of the problem they allow themselves to be entangled in the web that chads weave, ignoring the warning signs and diving headfirst into a cycle of disappointment and disillusionment. Chads, with their endless array of options, see women as nothing more than replaceable commodities in their quest for temporary gratification. And sadly, these women continue to fall victim to their charms, unaware of the toxic patterns that keep them trapped in a vicious cycle of ups and downs. In the end, perhaps they're getting exactly what they deserve. After all, if they continue to be immune to the toxicity of men like Chad, they'll only find themselves perpetually riding solo in the tumultuous landscape of modern dating. Men are owed a global apology. You see, we were sold this lie as women that we could have the most perfect man, we could have everything we've ever wanted and all our desires and dreams would come true. But it really was an illusion, it really was false. And what it's done for women is it's kept them single because the agenda of it was to remove the woman from the home and to stop the man wanting to return to it. So my global apology to men is that I'm sorry that I always thought I knew more and I'm sorry that I didn't let you lead. And I'm sorry that because of that, you would have never felt good enough. And that's simply not true. You are good enough and we do appreciate you and we do love you so much. And I'm sorry that those actions of mine made you feel like you weren't enough. The truth was that I didn't feel like I was enough and I was projecting that onto you and you didn't deserve that. So that's my global apology to all men. Ladies, use the comment section below. What is your apologies? What do you wanna say sorry for? 
What is your global apology to men? It's commendable that she's finally stepping up and taking accountability, but let's delve deeper into the situation. The truth is, it might be a little too late for her to realize the gravity of her actions. Us men have collectively checked out in mass, tired of the constant blame and unrealistic expectations placed upon us. Now, there's a line of women eager to be part of our lives, but they only get our time when it's convenient for us. This woman, once a relationship and marriage coach, has finally come to terms with the fact that she can't do it alone. For years, she's been part of the culture that trashed men, projected insecurities onto them, and placed blame on them for not meeting unrealistic standards. But as reality hits her hard, especially as she's hit the proverbial wall, it's time for her to face the music. It's time for her to realize that us men are the prize, and women can't thrive without us. Perhaps it's time for her to start showing genuine appreciation for the value that men bring to the table. This isn't just about her. It's about a larger societal shift that needs to take place. Women need to understand that men are not disposable commodities to be discarded at will. We deserve respect, appreciation, and reciprocity in our relationships. As she navigates this realization, it's up to us men to decide if we're willing to give her another chance. But until then, she and other women needs to recognize the error of their ways and work towards genuine change. After all, actions speak louder than words, and it's time for them to demonstrate their commitment to fostering healthy, respectful relationships with men.